Today I'm making pineapple fried rice. This dish is a delicious crowd pleaser, and I'm gonna show you a really eye-catching way to serve it up. Hey team, I'm Jet Tila, and welcome to Ready, Jet, Cook, where I teach you how to make my favorite Asian dishes from pantry to plate. But before we get into the dish, please take a moment and subscribe to the Food Network YouTube channel so you can keep up with more of my favorite recipes. Pineapple fried rice is the most iconic version of Thai fried rice, and it's the first recipe my grandma ever taught me how to make. It's a staple in my kitchen, and I can't wait for you to see how it all plates up. Let's get started. So let's start with pineapple. And the key to picking sweet pineapples every time are really using your senses. Number one, looking for a peach or almost pink color in the fruit versus green. Green usually means not sweet yet. And when you get into these yellows and peaches, I know this is gonna be sweet. Also, the pineapple should be heavy for its size. And the last sense you're gonna use is smell. And what you're gonna wanna do is smell that base of the pineapple. And if you get that floral pineapple smell, I guarantee you this is gonna be a perfect pineapple. So I'm gonna show you how to make a pineapple into a serving bowl. Thai cuisine is kind of known for its fruit carvings. And this is the most basic version that's gonna really be a stunner at the dinner table. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look for this kind of uh, symmetrical midpoint in the pineapple, meaning I'm gonna let the pineapple settle naturally on a flat spot. And I'm looking for that mid point, which is right there. Do not remove the fronds. I'm keeping the fronds on. I'm gonna line up the knife parallel to where I'm gonna cut, and I'm going to angle and just slide the edge in. So I've pushed the edge in and leaned to make that first cut. Once I'm done, I'm gonna flip it 180 degrees, find that cut line again, line it up visually to split that frond in half, and just lean, slice, and I've opened up that pineapple perfectly. I have two potential serving bowls here, and what I'm gonna do now is chalk up on the knife, meaning I wanna grab the knife by the blade, and I'm gonna kinda just give myself a visual cut line, right? I wanna come in about half an inch from the entire edge of the pineapple. Don't go all the way through. You don't wanna push through the pineapple. And the way to really control your blade is to do kind of small sawing motions. I've drawn a line from the perimeter. I'm gonna make a wedge from the center, the core. Now cutting out towards that perimeter, and I've got my first wedge. I'm gonna reverse the pineapple, start in at the core, meet that first cut. There's my second. And once I go from the center in, I can push out. And here's my final cut. I'm gonna take the knife, create my last wedge here, and then trace the core out. And in four movements, I have four pieces. Very, very simple. And then I'm gonna use the actual pineapple fruit around the core for my dices. My dices are simple. A tile becomes a slice. A slice becomes a dice. So remember, that's it. I'm kind of visualizing eating pineapple rice with a spoon. Every spoon should have a good combination of some rice, the Chinese sausage, all the delicious bits in one. So that's why this pineapple is kind of a medium dice to me. So I'm gonna get the pineapple out of the way. It's time to make pineapple fried rice. So now it's time to grab aromatics, and in Chinese cooking, it's garlic and ginger. But because we're making a Thai fried rice, we're gonna add shallots to the game. So mincing shallots, garlic, and ginger are all slightly different. So for the shallots, I cut the tip and the tails off to expose the lobes. I'm gonna bring the lobes to the edge of the board so I can uh, do a parallel knife pass, not going all the way through. Now I'm gonna go in perpendicular to the cutting board, 1 8 inch leaving it all connected by the end there. And then finally, I'm just gonna do a 1 8 slicing pass, and that's gonna give me a perfect mince. Ginger is pretty easy. I'm not a big proponent of having to peel ginger. Uh, that's really more of a visual thing. If I served you minced peeled versus minced unpeeled ginger, you wouldn't be able to taste the difference. Uh, but just to kind of give you an idea of how I like to peel it, just to kind of keep it clean, is I'll flatten off a piece of the ginger so it sits up straight. And then I'm just gonna use the back of my knife, uh, put pressure as I strip the skin away. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. And once the skin is stripped, I'm just going to cut it away. I'll do the same thing with the top, cut a flat edge. Yes, my grandmother would be mad that I'm wasting that ginger, but 
come on, man. It's really not that much. And again, stripping the ginger away. Flat tiles. Eighth of an inch is gonna be plenty here. We'll stack those on top of each other. I'll cut those into slices. I'm gonna perpendicular cut this now. Lastly, garlic. I'm always removing the ends of the garlic and then taking them apart that way. They just kind of fall apart. With the roots removed, just taking the knife and smashing them flat. There's a nice thin layer of garlic oil that lives right between the clove and the skin and it makes the skins just fall away. Now hot wok or hot pan means don't over process your garlic because you don't want it to basically catch on fire and burn immediately. All right, so that's it. Aromatics are done. Let me grab the rest of my items out of the fridge. All right, so Chinese sausage is its own thing. We call it lap chung in Chinese and it's friggin' delicious. But uh, if you've never had it before, uh, it tastes like a less sweet pepperoni. It's got kind of like the spirit and the sweetness of pepperoni, but way more savoriness um, and way more saltiness in, in the best way. It's super addictive. They're usually pork or chicken. There's got a good amount of seasoning and sweetness in there. And all I'm doing here is slicing it thin on a bias because I want to render it down. Uh, there's a decent amount of fat. And just like bacon, uh, you want to give Chinese sausage some time in the pan because you want that fat to render and you want that fat to flavor the rest of this dish. This rice was made yesterday, put in the fridge, and day-old rice is really a great trick to make sure you're not having to use too much oil in the pan. If you watch me make Chinese fried rice where I use egg, you can use hot rice. But because I'm making a Thai fried rice without egg, day old cold rice is the key. All right, so let's make some sauce. Very simple sauce makeup. We're gonna talk about just a few ingredients. So here I've got Thai fish sauce. Thai soy sauce or soybean sauce, but I need to get one more item from the pantry. I need to get some curry powder. This is a very simple sauce to build. I'm just dumping and stirring. So liquids first, fish sauce and soy sauce. Now Thai food, hot, sour, salty, sweet, savory. I've got savory and I got salt. So sugar is gonna be sweet. I'm adding a level of spice, not hot spicy, but literal dry spices with a little bit of curry powder. And curry powder is basically turmeric, which makes that yellow, and then a mix of all these other delicious dry spices. All the ingredients in, I'm just gonna stir this up. And what I've done in restaurants before is I've multiplied this recipe, I put it in a squeeze bottle, and I've just shaken it up. It just lives in the pantry or the fridge as a pineapple fried rice sauce. All right, sauce is done. I just need to grab my pan and let's get cooking. All right, so the pan is hot. I'm always starting with neutral oil, basically oil that doesn't have a lot of flavor but has a high smoke point. Aromatics, garlic, shallots, ginger. Make sure to get that super fragrant. I don't want it to brown right away. I'm gonna slow down the oil temp a little by adding my sausage. And now I'm gonna actually just use the surface area of the pan to really start rendering this Chinese sausage. I don't mind a little bit more oil to help the rendering. But again, I wouldn't be mad at you if you used bacon in here. I actually would never be mad at you if you used bacon in anything. But this is a really nice substitute. And if you are one to love egg in fried rice, this is also a great place for it. I would add it right after the oil and the aromatics and before the Chinese sausage. And as you can see, because I sliced it really thin, the Chinese sausage is already starting to crisp up on the edges and starting to render out. It's not a very high fat sausage. And while that's happening, I'm gonna cut some scallions because I have a little bit of time. So scallions in this dish are gonna be a garnish. So I'm gonna do a very extreme bias. So this might equate to a few uh, normal sized scallions. But again, very thin, very extreme bias. So I'm going to be garnishing and finishing with these scallions right near the end so they warm up a little bit. And they're gonna be married together with a bit of cilantro. This sausage is crispy on the edges. It's rendered out. The aromatics are brown, but they're not burnt. And now it's time to add the second protein, which is the shrimp. Now the shrimp are gonna cook really quickly. So I'm gonna to toss them in that aromatic 
oil just very, very quickly. I'm gonna move right to the rice. I'm really kind of looking for that shrimp to not cook through all the way. So let's slow that cooking process down by adding our rice. Super important to not break the rice grains. So use that bottom of the spatula to push and then toss over and keep pushing. You know, rice is kind of representative of your, your health, your life, your success. So don't be going and breaking rice grains, all right? Because that's bad juju. I do want the rice to have direct contact with this pan so the edges get nice and crispy. They start to warm up and open up that flavor and that texture. And I'm also always looking at that shrimp. I don't want this cooked yet because I still have to add my pineapple sauce and garnishes. But I do want to toss this rice into that fat. That's perfect right there. All right, the rice is opening up meaning it's declumping and getting nice and loose. Now it's time for sauce. As you're applying sauce, make sure to give that sauce a final mix to incorporate the sugar and the curry powder. And I'm actually gonna kinda use that sushi technique of the ladle of the little spatula helping to distribute the sauce. And that's just so I don't get one giant clump of sauce somewhere. So small pressing circles works the sauce into the rice. I've got nice even coverage, it's time for pineapple. Pineapple goes in, I put it in close to the end because I don't want this pineapple to cook. I just want it to warm. I don't want it to lose its acidity and its sweetness. I'm lowering down the heat. The rice has absorbed the sauce. The pineapple looks perfect. The shrimp looks perfect. I've gotta taste this. This is your last chance to make sure you've got the flavors right. So I'm going in now, hot, sour, salty, sweet, savory. That's what I'm tasting for. Mm. That's perfect. If it didn't have enough flavor, it's time to add a little sauce. If you feel like, oh no, I've got too much sauce in there, you can balance that out with a little more rice. Okay, so now it's time to fold in my scallions. And you can leave a few slices if you want for the top. But the scallions are really gonna kind of warm up and melt into this rice. Looks good. Bring your pineapple boat to the pan and just start loading. Man, that looks incredible. I mean, come on. That's literally art culinaire right there. Final garnishes for me is a little bit of white pepper. It's very traditional to put just a little kiss of white pepper on the top of fried rice. Just a little bit of cilantro over the top. There you have it, Thai pineapple fried rice. Always a stunner. It's one of those dishes you bring to the plate and you are kind of the celebrity chef of the day. I hope you make this at home. And when you do, take a photo, tag me and Food Network. Subscribe to that Food Network YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on Ready, Jet, Cook.